the UN Deputy Secretary General just stunned the world by visiting Burkina Faso. The West's inability to effectively collaborate with Africa, despite frequent affirmations of shared values and mutual interests, raises pertinent questions about the nature of their involvement on the continent. While there is often a portrayal of Western nations positioning themselves as benevolent helpers for Africa, studies have indicated a troubling trend where Africa's abundant resources fuel Western economies while the continent itself grapples with poverty and underdevelopment. This stark dichotomy has led to skepticism regarding whether aid presented under the guise of collaboration is, in reality, a mask for exploitation. As elections unfolded across Africa, concerted efforts were made in collaboration with the African Union to strengthen democracy and uphold core values that unite the continent's diverse population, particularly its youth. However, the discrepancy between the rhetoric of assistance and the persistent economic exploitation of African resources by Western nations has fueled suspicions about the true intentions underlying their engagement. The actions of international bodies like the United Nations have also come under scrutiny in this context. The recent visit of Amina Mohamed, the UN Deputy Secretary General, to Burkina Faso has raised questions about the genuine motives behind such diplomatic engagements. While these interactions are often framed as efforts to support sustainable development goals and address crises in the region, there is a growing concern about whether they might inadvertently perpetuate exploitative practices. Against the backdrop of West Africa's shifting geopolitical landscape, Mohammed's visit to Burkina Faso is seen as a significant diplomatic gesture, part of a broader strategy to reinforce support for the Sustainable Development Goals (SDGs) and tackle the multifaceted challenges facing the country and its neighbors. However, there is a palpable sense of skepticism regarding whether these engagements truly prioritize the interests and sovereignty of African nations or if they serve as a means for external actors to further their own agendas. The narrative of collaboration between the West and Africa is increasingly being questioned, with calls for a more equitable and transparent approach to partnerships. The historical legacy of exploitation and paternalism casts a shadow over contemporary interactions, leading to a deeper exploration of power dynamics and the true intentions behind external interventions. While the West often portrays its engagement with Africa as a mutually beneficial endeavor aimed at fostering progress and stability, the underlying power dynamics and historical context cannot be overlooked. The imperative for genuine collaboration that respects African agency and promotes sustainable development remains a pressing issue in the evolving dynamics of global partnerships. The consistent narrative of Western engagement with Africa, often framed as assistance but potentially entrenched in exploitative dynamics, raises fundamental questions about the nature of partnerships between these regions. The historical backdrop of exploitation and paternalism casts a shadow over contemporary interactions prompting a critical examination of power dynamics and intentions behind external interventions. When discussions of collaboration begin with propositions that suggest deals based on Africa's perceived poverty, it echoes a troubling historical pattern reminiscent of exploitative relationships. The notion of being on the giving hand while historically being on the taking hand underscores the complex power dynamics at play. While initiatives like the U.S.-Africa Leader Summit in 2014 aimed at fostering partnerships and shared success, the absence of tangible evidence showcasing shared success over the years raises concerns about the true nature of these engagements. The disparity between Africa's rich natural resources, which fuel Western economies, and its persistent state of poverty underscores a systemic imbalance in the current model of engagement. Despite assertions of assistance, what Africa truly requires is genuine partnership devoid of paternalistic undertones. The continent's turn towards collaborations with other global players like Russia and China signifies a shift towards relationships that prioritize mutual benefit over asymmetrical power dynamics. In the recent context, Amina Mohammed's meetings with senior government officials in Burkina Faso hold significance within the broader UN strategy. These interactions offer valuable insights into the country's political climate, challenges faced by the transitional government, and the complex dynamics of armed conflicts and political instability hindering development efforts. By engaging directly with local authorities, the UN aims to tailor its support to address specific needs and foster sustainable development. 
the assessment of progress in countries like the Central African Republic shapes the UN's approach to development, focusing on key indicators related to poverty reduction, education, healthcare, and environmental sustainability. By evaluating SDG progress in Burkina Faso, the UN can identify areas of success and challenges that require targeted interventions. This data-driven approach is essential for designing effective strategies that respond to the actual needs of the population, given the constraints of limited resources and vast needs. The imperative for genuine collaboration between the West and Africa remains paramount, necessitating a shift towards equitable partnerships that prioritize mutual benefit and sustainable development. By addressing historical power imbalances and fostering transparent, inclusive engagements, the potential for meaningful progress and shared success can be realized for both regions. In order to maximize impact and ensure that interventions align with broader development goals, it is crucial for the UN to allocate support effectively. This involves identifying key areas of concern and measuring progress against established targets. By focusing efforts on critical issues, the UN can better address the needs of the population and achieve desired outcomes. Moreover, engaging with local stakeholders and gathering feedback on current strategies through a participatory approach allows for refinement and adjustment of development programs to better meet the needs of the population. In a positive development on April 28, 2023, Two armed groups dissolved, signatories of a political agreement in Burkina Faso, signaling progress in the peace process. Despite ongoing challenges, these groups expressed willingness to help, underscoring the severity of Burkina Faso's humanitarian crisis driven by conflict and insecurity. This crisis has led to displacement, food insecurity, and a breakdown in essential services, emphasizing the importance of effective coordination of humanitarian assistance to reach those most in need efficiently. Amina Mohammed's visit underscores the significance of enhancing humanitarian coordination efforts. Effective coordination involves not only managing logistical aspects of aid delivery but also integrating different forms of assistance directed towards the most vulnerable populations. By working with local authorities, international organizations, and NGOs, the UN aims to streamline aid distribution, avoid duplication of efforts, and address immediate needs while planning for long-term recovery. Coordinating efforts such as delivering food aid alongside initiatives to restore agricultural production can have a more significant impact than addressing these issues in isolation. Similarly, integrating medical assistance with efforts to strengthen healthcare infrastructure can enhance overall health outcomes. Coordination also helps in identifying and addressing gaps in aid delivery, ensuring resources are utilized effectively in reaching underserved areas or populations. Amid limited resources and extensive needs, allocating aid in a manner that maximizes impact is essential. This involves managing financial resources, coordinating the use of human resources and expertise, and ensuring a hands-on approach to aid delivery. However, historical influences and power dynamics within the UN, particularly through the Security Council, have sometimes hindered its effectiveness and impartiality. The UN, established post-World War II to promote international peace and security, has often been influenced by the interests of its most powerful member states, particularly the P5 with permanent seats on the Security Council. The veto power of these members can shape UN actions, aligning decisions with the geopolitical interests of these nations. During the Cold War, this influence complicated the UN's mission, often leading to deadlock in addressing global conflicts. While the UN's mission is rooted in promoting peace and security, historical influences have at times compromised its impartiality and effectiveness. To truly serve the interests of all nations and address global challenges, Efforts to enhance coordination, transparency, and inclusivity within the UN's operations are essential. By prioritizing collaboration, mutual benefit, and sustainable development, the UN can better fulfill its mandate and promote a more equitable and peaceful world. During the period under scrutiny, the actions of the United Nations were frequently hampered by the necessity to navigate the conflicting priorities and vetoes wielded by the permanent five, P5, members. 
For instance, the Security Council often found itself paralyzed in situations where the interests of the United States and the Soviet Union directly clashed, leading to a lack of decisive action in crucial scenarios. This exemplified how the effectiveness of the UN was curtailed by the overarching geopolitical dynamics of the time. Following the culmination of the Cold War in 1991, the United Nations underwent a substantial transformation in its operations and mandate. The dissolution of the Soviet Union and the conclusion of the East-West conflict enabled the UN to broaden its field operations and engage in a more diverse range of complex tasks. This expansion encompassed peacekeeping missions, humanitarian interventions, and development programs across various conflict zones worldwide. The post-Cold War era marked a departure from the constraints imposed by superpower rivalry. Nonetheless, the legacy of Cold War politics continued to impact the UN's actions. While the organization could now tackle a wider array of issues, it still grappled with challenges related to the interests of its influential member states. Notably, the United States and other Western nations frequently shaped the UN's responses to global conflicts and crises, sometimes reflecting their strategic interests. The establishment of the United Nations was significantly influenced by the victorious Western powers post-World War II. Designed to succeed the ineffective League of Nations, the UN aimed to provide a more robust framework for international cooperation and conflict resolution. The geopolitical realities of the post-war world, with the United States and the United Kingdom at the helm, heavily shaped the organization's formation. The structure of the UN, including the veto power of the Security Council's permanent members, mirrors the dominance of these nations at that time. The influence of these Western powers has continued to play a pivotal role in shaping the UN's priorities and actions. The responses of the UN to crises have at times been molded by the interests of its powerful member states, as seen in instances like the interventions in Somalia and Rwanda during the 1990s. The sway of Western nations, particularly through their positions as permanent Security Council members, has significantly influenced the actions and policies of the United Nations. The veto power of the P5 members, the enduring Cold War dynamics, and the UN's origins in the post-World War II order have all contributed to this influence. While the UN strives to uphold international peace and security, its operations have frequently aligned with the conflicting interests of its most potent member states. The current scenario in Burkina Faso raises questions about the potential benefits and motivations behind external assistance. Given the history of geopolitical influences within the UN, Burkina Faso may be wary of accepting aid that could come with strings attached or ulterior motives. The visit by Amina Mohamed could potentially bring benefits to Burkina Faso in terms of addressing humanitarian crises and promoting development. However, it's crucial for Burkina Faso to carefully evaluate the terms and implications of such assistance to ensure it aligns with the country's interests and needs rather than serving external agendas. Thanks for watching till the end. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like as well as a sub so more people can see this.